Now previously this energy has been inaccessible but now I have done just that. With this zero point generator I'm now able to tap into this previously untappable source of power. At the workshop centre stands a compact metal machine that its creator calls the Zero Point Generator. He is an electrical and electronics engineer with more than 50 years of experience in power generation, telecommunications and information technology. Over his long career, one question kept returning. Was there a way to produce useful electrical power without burning fuel, without relying on sunlight or wind, and without building huge dams or complex infrastructure? That question slowly drew his attention toward the strange and often misunderstood idea of so-called zero-point energy. In quantum mechanics, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says that even the emptiest region of space is never truly still. Tiny electromagnetic fluctuations are always present. They appear and vanish, shift and ripple in ways that cannot be removed. Space is filled with this restless activity even when nothing else seems to be happening. The engineer behind the Zero Point Generator claims to have found a way to turn that background into usable power. According to his explanation, this machine allows direct access to that sea of energy. Before he walks through the hardware, he steps back and talks about how space and energy began. Space, time, energy and matter all emerged from the Big Bang. Without space, there could be no objects, no motion, and no flow of energy at all. Before the Big Bang, there was not even empty space, not even a volume where nothing could sit. He explains that the zero-point generator is designed to create a repeated disturbance in the local space-time around its back end, where the energy receiver or antenna is mounted. With each rotation of its internal motor, a very small region of space near that receiver is said to be compressed and then allowed to relax again. During the compression phase, the energy contained within that tiny volume of space has nowhere to go except into the body of the machine. Inside, that flow of energy is converted into mechanical torque that keeps the rotor spinning. The main unit of the system is the generator housing itself. At the front of this housing sits a special rotor, carefully balanced so it can spin at high speed with minimal friction. At the back is the energy receiver a solid piece of dense tungsten alloy that acts as the antenna for the space-time disturbance. For the device to operate, this receiver must be screwed firmly down into the body of the generator until it makes contact with the internal magnetic structure. If it is loose or removed, the machine cannot build up the effect it needs. Beside the generator is an electrical control and conversion board. Viewed from different angles, it looks fairly ordinary with wires, connectors, and standard electronic modules. Hidden within it are several important blocks. One module monitors the raw output from the generator and decides when there is enough power to do useful work. Once that threshold is reached, it switches on other modules that take the rough internal power and convert it to a stable 240 volt AC supply that can be used by regular household devices. To demonstrate the system, the engineer first secures the generator to a flat board so vibration will not cause it to wander across the bench when it starts to spin. He plugs in the control cables between the generator and the electrical board, making sure each connector is firmly seated. For a simple initial load, he prepares four 240 volt light globes wired in parallel to a single lead and plug. The plug goes into a power point and the switch on the wall is turned on. At this stage, the lights stay dark because the generator itself has not yet started to produce any power. Now he turns to the back of the machine and tightens the tungsten alloy receiver fully into place. With the receiver engaged, he goes to the front and gives the rotor a firm manual twist. The rotor begins to spin. With each rotation, more energy pulses are claimed to flow into the machine from the compressed region of space around the receiver. As those pulses accumulate, the generator spins faster and faster. Once it reaches its designed operating speed, the monitoring module on the electrical board senses that there is enough power available and activates the conversion modules. Almost instantly, the four light globes illuminate, now powered entirely by the output of the zero-point generator. After this first test, he unplugs the lights and chooses a more demanding load, 
This time he wheels over a domestic electric heater. The heater is plugged into the same outlet. Its control knob is set to maximum and its internal switch is turned on. Warm air begins to pour out. Throughout this demonstration, the generator continues to spin steadily, feeding power to the heater as if it were connected to a normal main supply. The claim is that as long as a load is attached and the receiver remains engaged, the generator could in principle continue running and supplying power without fuel, refueling, or scheduled maintenance. He adds an important warning. When the generator is operating, it must always have a load connected. If the machine is allowed to run without any device drawing power, the energy created inside has nowhere to go. Instead of leaving through the output, it begins to heat the internal parts of the generator. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Over time, this unused energy will cause the machine to overheat and eventually destroy itself. For that reason, whenever no power is required, the correct way to shut the generator down is not simply to disconnect the load, but to remove its source of energy by unscrewing the receiver. Once the receiver is backed out, the space-time compression effect stops, the inflow of energy ends, and the rotor gradually slows to a halt. To clarify how he believes the machine works, he describes its inner layout in more detail. Mechanically, the device consists of two main sections mounted on the same shaft. At the back is the receiver and motor assembly. At the front is the electrical generator section that delivers usable power. The core of the motor is a central armature that carries an intricate pattern of neodymium magnets. These magnets come in different sizes and are arranged radially according to a precise Fibonacci sequence. As the armature rotates, this pattern produces a complex repeating change in the magnetic field around the receiver region. He explains that changing magnetic fields are capable of warping space. In his design, the field around the tungsten receiver repeatedly bends a very small portion of space in and out. A tiny bubble of space-time is collapsed and then allowed to re-expand at the frequency of rotation. During each collapsing phase, the energy that normally resides in that small volume of space is forced inward through the receiver and into the machine, where it shows up as an extra twist of torque on the spinning armature. The arrangement of magnets in the Fibonacci pattern is presented as essential. Without that exact sequence and spacing, the field would not fluctuate in the right way, and the space-time anomaly would not appear. He states that he can demonstrate the presence of this anomaly by performing a Fourier transform on the modified field fluctuations, and then applying more advanced mathematics. But he also notes that such analysis is beyond the scope of a simple public demonstration. The initial source of motion still has to come from outside. When the machine is completely stopped, the armature is stationary and nothing unusual happens. To get the process started, someone must manually spin the rotor at the front. With each revolution, another pulse of energy is drawn in through the receiver and added to the rotation. The machine turns faster and faster until it reaches its optimum working speed. At that point, there is more energy entering the system than is required to keep the armature spinning. The surplus energy is then diverted to the generator section at the front and converted into usable 240 volt electricity at the output socket. He also addresses a subtle problem that arises because of the way energy behaves. Energy naturally tends to spread and escape if it can. If the pulses of energy inside the zero point generator were allowed to rush straight along the shaft and out through the front, they would bypass the armature and leave the machine too quickly in that case, there would be little or no power available to keep the rotor turning, and the device would fail. To prevent this, he has added a special round door or disc at the front of the generator. Built into this disc are two high-strength magnets. As the rotor turns, these magnets create a focused magnetic shield that sits across the path where the energy pulses would otherwise escape. Instead of shooting straight out of the front of the machine, the pulses hit this shield and are reflected back into the interior. Once trapped inside, the energy remains available until it is gradually used up as rotational force on the armature and then extracted as electrical power by the generator coils. The current machine is only a prototype. 
It was built mainly to illustrate the operating principles and to prove, at least to its creator's satisfaction, that the concept can work on a small scale. In its present form, it can deliver only a modest amount of power, enough to run lights, a heater, or similar household appliances. However, the design is described as fully scalable. By enlarging the core components, increasing the number and size of the magnets, and upgrading the receiver and generator sections, a 10 kilowatt version could, in theory, power an entire house. With further scaling, many megawatt units could be built to provide electricity for factories, neighborhoods, or whole towns. One important point remains the same, no matter how large the system becomes. A working zero-point generator will always be producing power as long as its receiver is engaged and its rotor is spinning, and that power must always have somewhere to go. In a typical home installation, this would require a smart load monitoring system. Such a system would constantly measure how much power the house is actually using. Whenever household demand falls below the generator's output, the monitoring system would automatically switch in power-wasting devices such as heat banks or resistor arrays to soak up the extra energy. If this is not done, the unused power would again start to overheat the generator and could lead to self-destruction. From the engineer's perspective, this prototype is the first step toward an unlimited supply of free, clean energy. By tapping into the restless background fluctuations of space itself, the zero-point generator promises electricity on demand without fuel, combustion, pollution, or rising costs. Whether or not the underlying physics will stand up to independent testing, the machine is presented as a bold attempt to harness the deepest levels of reality and transform the invisible energy of the vacuum into practical power for everyday use.